Political Buzz is your rapid-fire look at the best political topics of the day. Three questions, 30 seconds on the clock. Playing today, political analyst and culture critic Goldie Taylor, Dean Obedala, the co-founder of the Arab American Comedy Festival, and CNN contributor Will Kane. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Hello. First question, Newt takes a nosedive in a new CNN Time ORC poll out of Iowa and Romney's going strong. But today, everyone is talking about Rick Santorum surging to third place. What's going right for Santorum, Goldie? Rick Santorum is going back to the very basics of politics, door to door, house to house. I think he ran his campaign on a $25 gas card. And I think that's really all he needs at this point. And so he's looking to breathe new life into his campaign by reaching voters on a one-to-one -one basis, and it's paying off. All right, Will, what do you think? A couple things. One, uh, it's just his turn. Uh, as Newt Gingrich falls, Rick Santorum rises. Two, hard work is paying off. As Goldie just said, he's hit every county in Iowa. That's going to pay off sooner or later. Three, his candidacy is tailor-made for Iowa. He is a candidate that's putting family values, social conservatism first. That's going to pay off in a state that over-indexes for evangelical Christians. And fourth, finally, his weakness, his personality, and how it translates in debates as kind of irritated and insolent that it's not his turn and he's not getting enough time, hasn't been on display for a couple weeks. All that's adding up to a surge to third. Well, if you're not on TV and you do well, then perhaps he's not looking forward to the next time he's going to have to appear in that kind of form. Dean, what do you think? The Santorum surge. I don't think he's doing anything well. I think he's just the next contestant on American Presidential Idol, Idol frankly. It's like, so you think he'd be president? He's the next guy. He gets elevated, then gets torn down. Rick Santorum is not a good candidate. The man in 2006 lost re-election in his home state of Pennsylvania by 16 percentage points. His, the people in his own state don't like him. If Rick Santorum was the only Republican candidate, he would still be in third place right now. He has no chance. He's unelectable. So this is meaningless. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Mitt Romney says he'd rather have Ron Paul in the White House than Obama. Here's what he told Wolf Blitzer. If Ron Paul were to be the Republican nominee, it's a big if, but let's say he wins the Republican nomination. Could you vote for him? You know, I, I've already crossed that uh, uh, river, if you will, by saying uh, on the stage a number of times, as I believe Speaker Gingrich has, that all the people on the stage would be superior to the president we have. Uh, so, yes, I would, I would vote for him. If Romney gets the nomination, could this come back to haunt him? Will? I guess it could. Look, um, let's talk about will, not should. Ron Paul's candidacy is becoming to be defined by this newsletter issue and the racism and homophobia and the 9-11 truther stuff that showed up in those newsletters. It's not being defined anymore by his dedication and principles to small government and constitutional conservatism. So because of that fact, that's kind of a risk Mitt Romney didn't need to take. He's the most risk-averse candidate out there, mm -hmm. and that's been paying off for him. So why take this risk? Kind of an unforced error. Right? Goldie, what do you think? I think he was backed into it. I think they asked, you know, Newt Gingrich about it. Newt Gingrich said no, and so they had to ask Mitt, you know, just in all due fairness. But, you know, the, the general election is such a far distance away that they will just forget about Ron Paul and this question by then. Unless, of course, Ron Paul becomes an independent candidate. But those newsletters are the gift that just keep on giving. All right, Dean, what do you think? As an independent, to be honest, I don't think this issue means anything. I think it's to come down simply to this. Which candidate can help revive our economy? Who can create jobs? Who can lower unemployment? I'll be honest, the economy improves. I think President Obama wins easily. If it gets worse, President Obama stands a chance of being the third president in the modern day to lose re-election. I think it's simply the economy. These little minor issues mean nothing. Your buzzer beater, everyone. 20 seconds each. A blurb from U.S. News says John Huntsman is a regular at the Trader Joe's just blocks from the White House and that no one recognizes him. Does that sum up his campaign or should he just get his uh, trail mix, whatever you get at Trader Joe's, elsewhere? Goldie. I think it's less about where he shops and more about nobody knows who John Huntsman is. And so this is the guy who would be president who won't be president. And so whether or not he shops at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or your local Bilo, who cares? He's not going to win the election. He's not going to win the nomination. Will. When I first got this hall, I got to admit, I didn't kind of get the, uh, the analogy. Maybe I'm a little slow. But now I actually think it's perfect. He buys his groceries 
at a Trader Joe's next to the White House and nobody recognized him. His candidacy has been failed for two reasons. A, nobody knows who he is, nobody recognizes him. And two, those that do think he's too close to the White House. He's too close to the Obama administration. I think it's a perfect analogy now. Dean. I don't think John Huntsman has recognized the Republican presidential debates, to be quite honest with you. The guy's running at 1%. He's below the margin of error in Iowa. He might actually owe people votes at this point. My advice, John Huntsman, become a Democrat, run in 2016. You could be a moderate Democratic leader, perhaps, in the party and get the nomination as a Democrat. Never gonna, never get as a Republican with his stance. It's not going to happen. You know, let me just say, John Huntsman's the most conservative guy on that stage from a policy perspective. No one seems to understand this, including Dean. John Huntsman, as a policy perspective, is the most conservative guy on the stage. I but wish everybody... Well, would understand the Republican Party's gone so far right that he can't he Just can't attract the voters. But I'm beating John, John Huntsman, Huntsman right now. Well, that's the problem. He can't get votes in the Republican primary. We'll be honest, scoring Will. higher, you guys. I'm beating John Huntsman right now. <laughs> Thanks to everyone for playing. Goldie, Will, and Dean will speak with you in the coming days as we approach the Iowa caucuses next Tuesday. And tune in Tuesday night for the country's first.